Greetings to you all. My uh, fourth talk in regard uh, to a heroic solution to all the misery of Islam is about the humility that the Prophet of Islam did not have and caused a lot of misery in Islamic countries. A humble person is one who does not consider himself better or more important um, than others so as not to become the cause of discrimination and dictatorship in the family and society. A humble person loves peace and sacrificially paves the way so that people can live together in peace and harmony. But an immodest person is someone who is unable to see the importance of others and therefore looks for every opportunity to abuse their rights. In the last 10 years of his life in Medina, when the Prophet of Islam reached the peak of his power, he and his new Quranic revelation no longer showed humility. To satisfy his carnal desires with slave and captive girls, he even violated his oath to his um, wife secretly. In Surah Tahrir, verses 1 to 5, we see that his wives protest their violation, but instead of apologizing, he threatens his wife with divorce and further reveals verses that Allah is not happy with their protest. Does a true prophet justify his sensual, lustful deeds? It is really surprising that Islam is called the perfect religion with such a leadership. We also read in Surah Al-Ahzab that the Prophet of Islam desired to get Zainab, the wife of his adopted son Zayd, divorced so that she could become his own wife. He was planning to declare um, this secret in a religious way to um, achieve his dream. It was at this time that he announced receiving verses from Allah um, for the legitimacy of adopted father's marriage to his adopted son's wife. Zayd, the adopted son, therefore had no choice but to divorce Zainab so that she could become uh, Muhammad's wife. The Prophet of Islam had many wives and six slave girls, but not satisfied with this, he targeted the only wife of his adopted son and caused him to divorce his wife for his lustful sensual desire. Is this truly humil humility? It is not. It's a complete abuse of authority and uh, betrayal of his adopted son uh, and Zainab. His Quran in Surah and Nisa verse 34 also made it legal for husbands to beat their wives. Is this humility? In Surah at Tawbah, verse 23, the Prophet of Islam commands immature children to rebel against their unbelieving guardians or less faithful Muslims. Is this humility? He could not bear to hear criticism from anyone among his colleagues and followers. So much so that even through the Quran in Surah al hazab uh, verse 36, he made it rule that no one 
has the right to comment on his decision. Killing his own critic was his first priority. Whereas a humble person is known for its patience in listening to the thoughts of others. Only, only proud people have the appetite of a dictator and do not allow others to speak. In regard to non-Muslims, also the Prophet of Islam not only banned interaction with them, but also allowed them to be looted. In Surah Ali Imran, verse 118, he accuses non-Muslim of all kinds of wrongdoing and tell Muslim not to befriend them. And in uh, Surah al furqan verse uh, 52, he says that Muslims should not obey non-Muslims, but be inspired by the Quran for waging war against non-Muslims. And that's why listening to non-Muslims is costly in most Islamic countries. The Prophet of Islam is the highest spiritual and social authority among Muslims. This person shows humility neither to his family, nor to his followers, nor to others. Do you think that society can achieve peace and prosperity in view of his leadership? Not at all. The 1400 year of, you know, history of Islam in Islamic country has shown us that Muhammad's leadership model produces nothing but misery. Logically also we know that the selfishness and dictatorship of a leader deprives his family and society of peace. I really encourage you to read the gospel and see what humility is and uh, why attitudes like the attitudes of the Prophet of Islam are disgraceful in the eyes of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet and also dried them with a the towel and then said to them, you call me teacher and Lord? You are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. See how the mission of the Prophet of Islam is against such a constructive humility in Jesus Christ. Concerning family and society, the Gospel of Jesus Christ says to the follower of Jesus that they have been baptized into union with Jesus and therefore have increasingly become like him. So there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles, slaves and free, male and female. These are from the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. You see therefore that the Prophet of Islam, by coercing his colleagues, his family, his community and non-Muslims, and indulging in lustful matters, could not be reconciled with Jesus Christ in constructive humility. Because the lack of humility and sacrifice in the life of the Prophet of Islam has not provided a good example of leadership in Islamic countries, this has resulted in untold misery. You Muslims have not been and will not be able to overcome the misery with the self-indulging leadership style of the 
prophet of Islam. You need to turn away from Islam and clothe yourself with the humility of Jesus Christ. Please do not let the baseless propaganda of Muslim teachers about the gospel distract you from reading the gospel. Also, please do not let the dark spots of Christian history discourage you from reading the gospel. The gospel is from the heart of Jesus, but not the history of Christianity. Read the gospel and see why humility in Jesus Christ is unique and constructive. Thank you so much for being with me. God bless you all. Thank you.